welcome to the first edition, I guess, in this new series called Let Jackal Speak, which is basically a podcast sort of thing that you see other YouTubers do, where I basically just talk about, you know, random things that's on my mind or multiple topics I want to put into one video. I don't know how long these will be. I don't know if every one will have audio and a picture or I'll be on camera. So I don't know what's going to go on with that, but you know, this is just the first one. Um, you know, let me know in the comments how this is. Let me know if it's boring or let me know if it's entertaining. Let me know how it is for you, you know, because I want to know if this series is good or not. Because if nobody's digging it, I don't want to keep doing it. So let's get this started. So the first thing I want to talk about is uh, the Purge movie. So I recently seen the Purge election year. And, you know, first impressions, I think it was an all right movie. Um, not as good as the second one. I want to speak on the series from start to finish real quick before I talk about election year. The first Purge movie wasn't that good. I mean, you had a good actor. You had Ethan Hawke. He's a good actor. But aside from that, the movie sucked. It was boring. All they did was stay in a fucking house pretty much the whole movie. And it's just not entertaining because, yeah, you get some crazy showing up and you get some shooting scenes, which I guess is kind of cool, but it's it, it, you don't even get to be outside. Like, the whole thing of The Purge is basically, if people don't know, it's like... I forgot what day it is, but on a certain day, for a limited amount of hours, a you get to go out there and cause havoc. You can kill people, you can cause murder, you can cause murder, mayhem, and havoc, and get away with it. You know, you can do a bunch of crazy shit, kill people, murder, havoc, you can get away with it for a limited amount of hours, you know, pretty, pretty much you can do, break the law and get away with it. That's what it sort of is, that's what it pretty much is, and... It would be better to go outside and see how it is or do some kind of story where it's set outside instead of being in the house the whole movie because you don't really get to see what really happens in The Purge and it's very boring. So the first one is the weakest one. Um, it's a shame because Ethan Hawke, you know, out of the whole Purge series, even though I do prefer Frank Grillo and I think he's uh, a better main fit, Ethan Hawke is the most known actor in the series and if they would have done the story right he could have been in the rest of the sequels but you know i don't want to spoil anything but yeah he's not in the other sequels they got another actor and when it comes to the purge anarchy purge 2 that's my favorite one that's the best one it's an improvement over the first one and anybody who didn't like the first one you will like the second one because there is more action better characters and it's more out in the open. You know, you got Frank Grillo, who's a badass in the film. He reminds me of the Punisher. The way he looks, he just, he reminds me of him. So, if they ever need a new Punisher in the future after John Bernthal, get Frank Grillo. I think he's a perfect fit for the Punisher. A perfect fit. You gotta get him in the future for Punisher. He, he, he fits him. Maybe he could get a bit bigger because he doesn't seem like a really buff buff guy maybe he is maybe it's just the certain clothes he's wearing but you know he's a badass in the film but basically his goal is he wants to kill this guy who killed his son this guy basically ran over his son and it, i think it was sort of an accident type of thing where he was driving and he accidentally killed his son and now he wants revenge so that's the plot of the film for this character and on his way there you know he encounters other survivors and there's sort of this group he has with him and they encounter a bunch of crazy shit um, it's just a better film overall. I haven't seen it in a bit, so I can't remember a lot of scenes. But it's just a better film overall. There's more action. It's a lot more fun to watch. You have the one guy in there who always plays like a Hispanic Mexican gangster. It's the bald dude with the goatee. He was in uh, Wrong Turn at Tahoe. He was in The Walking Dead. Um, he was in the Jim Carrey movie uh, Bruce Almighty. I don't know if he was in Breaking Bad or not. But I'm sure people know who I'm talking about. He he plays the same character in everything he's in. He was in Training Day, I think so. Um, so he's in there. He basically plays the same character he does. Um, it's just it's just a lot more fun as a film. There's a lot more action. Frank Grillo is a better lead than Ethan Hawke. It's it's a lot cooler, and it, I like it a lot more. And it's probably the best one because it has the most action, and it's the most entertaining, and it's cool as fuck. Now the third one, The Purge Election Year, which I did watch recently. It was a good film. It's not as good as the second one. It's better than the first one, but it's not as good as the second one. And, you know, there should have been more. I was expecting more because the idea is cool where Frank Grillo, his character, he's basically a bodyguard. He's basically protecting this 
woman who wants to be elected to get rid of the purge and it's a dangerous job because she wants to get rid of the purge but these other people involved with the government i don't remember their name they're involved with the government they support the purge they don't want it gone because it makes them money and shit like that getting rid of the poor not having to take care of them there's a lot that goes into that in the movie and how they make more money off and stuff and they don't want to get rid of it so you know you know you find out in the beginning of the film that they want to get rid of her so she's really a big target in the purge movie now one thing i don't understand is wouldn't other people be pissed off? I mean, other people who go out there and kill, who enjoy the purge, wouldn't they be pissed the fuck off? Like, you know what? Look, I don't like this girl either. We need to kill her so she doesn't get rid of the purge. I mean, already there's going to be people attacking her because it's the purge. But, you know, the, I, I still think it would have been cool if there was, like, other side characters who were after her. And there wasn't enough encounters. I mean, you had the one group with the Patriot outfits who uh, sort of had them trapped for a minute. You had the uh, you had the girls in the cars with Christmas lights and golden AKs, which, let me tell you right now, because I think there's like three storylines in here. You have the bodyguard and the secretary. You have the store story with the black dude, the Mexican, and the girl. And then you have the story with the underground... I forgot what they're called, but it's like a black dude who owns this underground place who is against the purge and helps the poor people, whatever. And then you have this medical van or whatever. And I remember there being like a fucking, just a stupid bitch. Like she was annoying, man. I forgot her name, but she was like a teenage black girl, very rebellious. She wanted to steal some candy. And when she got caught, she was talking shit to the store owner, the store owner. And then this other black female character, you know, told her to put it away and, you know, she looked up to this black girl because she was like the death. I forgot what her name was. You know, I only watched it once. But apparently she was somebody famous or sort of popular, I guess. And she liked her. So she put the candy away. But I hated her character. I'll give it to her, though. She's a good actor because I think that's what her job was. To make this bratty, edgy, uh, rebellious teenager, you know. And that's what she was. Um, and I was, you know... She she was a bitch in the film, so there's there's her, you get the, you get the people in the costumes, but I don't really remember a lot of encounters. I mean, you do get the you do get the, the gangbangers, but they're not really, at, they're not really enemies. When you watch the film more, you find out that they're sort of allies. Um, there was a funny line I really liked the black dude from the shop when he was in the van with all the characters. He basically said, um, he was like, he was like we're. What did he say? He said, "We're we're sending a we're pretty much, we're pretty much fried chicken. We're pretty much in a big bucket of fried chicken or something like that, waiting to get eaten, or we're they're coming towards us while we're setting just something related to a bucket of fried chicken. The way he said it, the way it was executed, I thought it was pretty funny. I thought it was really funny. I, I liked it a lot. Um, not much made me laugh in this film, but that was a pretty funny line. There is some dialogue that is questionable, like." I remember a black dude in the shop said that he can't stop he can't stop thinking or he thinks about waffles and pussy. I thought that was a just a I don't know, just a dumb just dumb dialogue. You know, some of the dialogue was a little dumb in this movie. A little dumb for sure. Um and one thing I noticed that was interesting is they they sent these agents after the secretary and the main character and they were like Nazi like or something. I don't know if they're like racist or something the people who went after him but they were like nazi type they had the nazi sign and shit like that so maybe it's what their army is or whatever but you know the film was okay overall you know you got frank grillo but there could have been more action i mean the scenes were cool where frank grillo is fighting two dudes outside with the brass knuckle blood the brass knuckle blade thing when he's stabbing him you know you got He's fighting the army guy. That's a cool scene. You know, Frank Grillo is a badass bodyguard in this movie, but there's not enough fight scenes. There's not enough um, of him fighting and defending her. It's just more so they're on the run, really. So what this movie lacked is more action. There needed to be more action with Frank Grillo. There needed to be more run-ins with different people in The Purge. There was only, like, the girls with the AKs, the people with the Patriot outfits, the girls singing on the street. You had the underground people. You had the store people. You had the... I think that was it. I don't know if I'm forgetting anybody, but... I just feel like you didn't have enough 
encounters and didn't have enough action with Frank Grillo. That's what really lacked in the movie and some of the dialogue. Um, but overall, you know, pretty okay movie. I'd probably give it a 7 or 6. Definitely not as good as the second one, but okay enough. But aside from The Purge, um, I want to talk about something else, which is basically an album I listened to recently called The Invocation by Sinners and Winners. Um, if you don't know who Sinners and Winners is, it's basically Dobby's solo career. Dobby Vanity is from BOTDF, a.k.a. Blood on the Dance Floor. That's the group he's from, and I'm sure people know who that is. He created a solo group called Sinners or Winners, and uh, I decided to listen to the solo album, The Invocation. You know, I was playing Oni Musha 3, I was like, fuck it. You know, because I was farming for souls, because one thing about Oni Musha 3 is you can go in an area, kill enemies, get souls, go back out, go in. You can just pretty much farm for souls and be maxed out before you even get any further in the game. It's pretty fucking broken and cheap, but I do it, you know. It helps you upgrade easier. But, um, I decided, fuck it, let me listen to The Invocation, you know, by Sinners and Winners, and... The album really wasn't that good. I wasn't expecting much because I was not. I wasn't really impressed with his other album, which was the self-titled album. <clears throat> the self-titled album. I wasn't really impressed with that one. You know, a lot of the songs bored me. It was all right, but I decided to listen to the invocation, and I really only cared for two songs. Um, I feel like the fur the tracks two and three, which is Queen of the Damned and the Invocation. They felt very Marilyn Manson like it was like he was trying to copy Marilyn Manson. Um, the other the other songs just didn't do much for me. Invoke the darkness that was, you know, the one of the two songs I didn't mind. I like the beat on there. It's very dark. Um, you know, it's it, it's enjoyable enough. It's not as generic as the other ones. It's not as edgy and kind of cringy because some of these songs are a little bit cringy. Um, I hate every fucking one. I hate that song. Very generic. Very boring. The screaming is annoying. It's just not a good song. And then there's Elixir, which is the second one that I care for. It just, it, it's a very different sound for Davi. Very weird beat change up. Pretty decent singing. You know, the other, only other song I care, the only other song I care about. You have Allergic to Bullshit, which I hate that song. It sounds like some edgy teenager that hates the world fucking singing. The War Inside Our Soul, generic. Perfectly flawed. Fucking, it's like... Really, he wants to be Manson so bad. Perfectly Flawed is a complete Marilyn Manson wannabe song. Because the beginning of the song copies a Marilyn Manson intro. I don't remember the name. I think it's in the Shadow of the Valley of Death or something. It's a song from Hollywood. And he completely copies it. He copies it. And it's fucking ridiculous. He copies the fucking song. You know completely copies it's not like he's inspired and he sort of used his style no he copied the exact intro it's fucking ridiculous so overall the invocation wasn't that great um a very boring album i only cared for two songs so that was a waste of time that was a complete waste of time with the sinners of winners album but <clears throat> aside from that i think that's all i really wanted to talk about in the first edition of let Jackal speak. Let Jackal speak. Uh, let me know what you thought of this series. I I don't know if I'll put in the title what I talked about or not, but let me know what you thought. Let me know if this was fun or interesting, or maybe, or maybe you like this series, but you're not exactly entertained by what I talk about. So, if you like this series and you want to keep it going, but you're not exactly entertained with what I talked about in this video, let me know in the comments. But, yeah, just give, please give me some feedback on this series. Because I don't want to continue something that people do not enjoy. Um, maybe you can... I, I guess maybe you could request things I could talk about in the series. I don't know if I'll exactly do them. But maybe that's something worth trying. But this was the first installment of Let Jackal Speak.